A warm welcome to today's talk. It's Monday the 24th of January. Now, really quite a significant paper to report today. People that have had natural infection with SARS coronavirus 2 have got very high levels of ongoing immunity, protection against disease and protection against hospitalisation. So if someone's had the natural infection and then they're subsequently vaccinated, it really doesn't improve their level of protection. So people that have been infected then vaccinated versus people that have been infected and they're not vaccinated, their levels of immunity are essentially the same. And this is really quite a profound uh, paper. It's, it's actually from the Centers for Disease Control. Now, what they did here is quite, quite clever, really. They took four cohorts, four groups of people from those. From those um... So one cohort, um, unvaccinated, no previous diagnosis. So people who had not been exposed to the virus via a vaccine antigen and people that had no previous diagnosis. In other words, they were completely naive to the virus. They had no recognition of the virus at all because it's a new virus. Second group vaccinated with no previous diagnosis. So these people were vaccinated but didn't have a diagnosis. So they'd been vaccinated but hadn't got the natural infection, in other words. Uh, next group, unvaccinated with a previous diagnosis. So these people were unvaccinated, but had a diagnosis. And this is the group here that they found to do remarkably well in terms of ongoing immunity and protection. Again, I've seen nothing of this in the mainstream media. And uh, fourth cohort, uh, vaccinated people with a previous diagnosis. So vaccinated with a previous diagnosis. In other words, they had the advantage of vaccination and the advantages of natural infection. Uh, so what happened to these people during Delta? Now, so important to realise this is pre-Omicron, but this is people who've had the natural uh, infection or, 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 or the first virus out of Wuhan, what we normally call the B11 virus strain, and people who'd had the alpha. How did they do in terms of protection from Delta is the question. Now, here's the first graphic that starts to answer this. Now, this one's from California. Unvaccinated and no previous diagnosis of COVID-19. So if someone's unvaccinated, no previous diagnosis, they are completely naive to the infection and therefore really quite at risk. So when Delta came along, a lot of those understandably were infected. And of course, it went up here and it went down there. So if you've had the natural infection, whether you get vaccinated or not, doesn't improve or reduce your risk of hospitalizations. It stays equally low. The only, the only people that had a slightly higher risk here of hospitalization were this group here with a uh, vaccinated but no previous COVID-19 diagnosis. So that their risk was higher. So we see that the natural infection is given greater protection or slightly greater protection than vaccination if that vaccination is not accompanied by natural infection. And again, we see that people that are unvaccinated with no previous COVID-19 diagnosis by far most at risk. The next at risk group was much less at risk but that was vaccinated no previous COVID-19 diagnosis but right down here unvaccinated people previous COVID-19 diagnosis and vaccinated people with a previous COVID-19 diagnosis so we see by far the lowest risk here and I think you'd have to say these lines essentially overlap these people are by far the lowest risk whether or not they've been vaccinated if they've had previous COVID-19 infection. So we can now put our cohorts in order. Results starting with the most at risk going down to the least at risk. So the most at risk are people that are unvaccinated with no previous diagnosis. So this shows it has been a good idea in the past to get vaccinated. Because you don't want to be exposed to this virus with no cover from vaccine and no cover from previous infection. Next at risk, uh, vaccinated with no previous diagnosis.
So people that were vaccinated with no previous diagnosis were second most at risk. So they were most at risk, they were second most at risk. And really, we could see, say, equally low risk for these two. So, so the, these are third and fourth together, not in really in any particular order, um, because the data is not that. They're basically the same. The data is very, very similar. This is unvaccinated with previous diagnosis and vaccinated with previous diagnosis. indicating that vaccination doesn't really make any difference to the risk of hospitalisation if you've had previous infection. Vaccination doesn't really make any difference to the risk of hospitalisation if you've had previous infection. Conclusion to draw from this. Natural immunity, with or without vaccine, provides robust protection against hospitalisation in the age of Delta. We can say that for sure. We will be talking in a minute about the relative risk, of course, now we are in the age of Omicron. Um, just note here, the people who died uh, had no risk of reinfection. So, obviously, the people that were left alive, who'd, uh, who'd survived this, uh, th th they're the ones that are left to tell the tale. So, we don't want to use this to say that the vaccines were no good at the time. The vaccines did save a lot of lives at the time because this is this is by virtue of the fact that this is data of those that survived. Um, so this data is about those who survived the infection. So questions. If I've not been vaccinated or infected, should I seek out natural exposure? Well, clearly we know that if you haven't been vaccinated or infected, your risk of hospitalisation, your risk of catching the disease has increased, your risk of hospitalisation is increased as well. Um, so that would be a very dangerous thing to do. So if you haven't been vaccinated or infected, you should not seek out natural exposure. Absolutely not. You should get vaccinated first to greatly reduce your risks of when you are naturally exposed. Would some higher risk groups still benefit from subsequent vaccination? Well, the answer to that is probably yes, but we don't know that for sure. The data doesn't show us that. So this applies to the whole population. Are there some particular groups that could be selected for third or even fourth doses? Well, we know there are actually because some people are immunosuppressed. So the answer to that really is yes, but they need to be selected on an individualised basis. Is there still an advantage in younger people getting boosted if they've had an infection? Well, in terms of protection against hospitalisation, the answer to that is it would appear not, wouldn't it? It would appear not. So is this whole booster programme that we're doing in the younger age groups going to keep more people out of hospital? Uh, from this information, it would appear not. And this is data driven. This is data driven. Professor Clancy yesterday, I hope, oh, did you get the chance to watch that video yesterday with P Professor Robert Clancy? Amazing, amazing science, am amazing guy. Uh, do, do try and watch that if you possibly can. And uh, it, it, he was making the, this very point that people panicked into boosters rather than going by data of hospitalisation. But an, another point from the professor's talk in a minute. Um, is there still an advantage in young people getting boosted if they've uh, not had the infection well if they've not had the infection then it becomes slightly more ambiguous and this data doesn't actually uh, answer that do we need to change the one size fits all recommendations uh, let me think about that of course we do um, the idea that we're saying booster doses for everyone rather than selecting people is just just doesn't make any sense we need to be much more selective about what we're doing not just treat the whole population as a whole should there be a modified vaccine recommendations for those who've been infected? Well, clearly the answer to that is yes, because it completely changes the risk benefit dynamic. Completely changes that. Um, is it worth getting uh, antibody checks to membrane protein, envelope protein, nuclear capsid protein? And in other words, getting an antibody test to tell us if we've had the natural infection or not. See, at the moment, we're not doing that. At the moment, we're saying get back vaccinated, whether you know you've been infected, whether you don't know you're infected, whether you've got antibodies, whether you don't know you've got antibodies. 
We're just we're just doing mass booster campaigns uh, completely blind at the moment. This is the policies that we're adopting. Whereas if we knew that someone who had the natural immunity because they had M protein antibodies, E protein antibodies or N protein antibodies, then that would greatly change the risk benefit analysis because we know that the vaccination after they've had the natural infection is not going to improve their chances of keeping out of hospital. So the answer to that is absolutely yes. And again, we saw we saw this yesterday when we were interviewing Dr. Cohen. He, he he frequently orders these tests, so he knows if people have been positively diagnosed, and it also allows him to make a differential diagnosis because just someone, because someone's reporting respiratory symptoms in this age of Omicron does not automatically mean that it is SARS coronavirus to Omicron. So yeah, yeah, we absolutely need to start doing antibody tests. So if someone tests positive for antibodies, meaning they've had natural infection, they don't have particular com uh, comorbidities, then why would you want to give them a booster dose of vaccine? Because it's not improving their chances of keeping out of hospital and, and making virtually no difference to the chances of getting infected anyway. Um, how well th this wild type... So this was the wild type immunity and the alpha-induced immunity from these previous waves that protected against Delta. How will this work in the age of...